Hi, I'm George Pearson. In this Adobe Lightroom video, I'll be showing you how to take this full color photograph here and convert this into a black and white with color picture just like that using the adjustment brush. Now, if you like this video, make sure you click that like button and of course, share with your friends. Don't forget to also hit that subscribe button. And if you want to learn a lot more about how Adobe Lightroom works, take a look at my complete training titles and you'll find the link for that right down there in the description. Okay, let's get to it. Here we are back at the original image. And as you can see, I'm in the develop module right up there. And I'm looking at the top bar up here. And at the right hand side, we have the adjustment brush. Now this kind of a project where you are converting the background into black and white, leaving the foreground subject in color. This kind of thing is really best done in a program like Adobe Photoshop or even Photoshop Elements. It's much better doing this kind of thing because you can use layers over there and do a real nice clean job. But we can do that here as well inside of Lightroom. And this just happens to be an easy way to talk about how to use the adjustment brush. There are a few basic things in here. We have our settings right down below here for the brush. There's the effect. You can adjust your temperature and tint right here. Exposure settings in there. Clarity sharpness settings in here and down here. Some defringing as well. And there's a slider control over here. You can come down and get a lot more as well. Now all we care about really are just some of the stuff up in here. To convert this into a black and white, we will simply bring the saturation down to negative 100 as you can see right down there. I'm just going to bring this up to the basic setting here. There's our exposure setting. That's, let's set this one right at 1. You can actually double click in there and just type in a number. And let's set all these other numbers here back to their 0 settings. Just zero everything out. There we go. So everything is zeroed out now. And the main one you want to work with here is saturation. Taking saturation clear to the left gives you a completely desaturated or all the color removed image. So that's the basic first setting. We'll come back and adjust some of the other settings in here a little bit after we have the first part of this done. Now, notice down here there's a Done button. When you've finished all this work in here, click on Done, and it then sets that in place. Now, the reason why you have this done is you can come in and do more than one of these brushes. Notice up here I have New as my option. If I had a an additional brush up it was already done, it would say edit as an option over here. So I could either go with new or go with edit. Down below here, left hand corner where it says show edit pins, we have auto and always and the selected pin or never. I'll set mine at always so you can see that pin. Now what this does is the first place you click, that's where your selection is pinned to. And what you're actually doing here when you're working with this is you are creating a mask in here and the mask is showing the effect. If you move the pin, it will actually move the mask and the effect moves as well. So just keep that in mind. You want to leave those pins where they are pretty much. You don't want to be moving those things around. I tend to put the pins off away from my subject area as well if it's in my work area. I also have an option down here to show selected mask overlay if you want to. Okay, let's just see how this works. I'll do a little bit right in here. Saturation is set at negative 100. Now notice the size of my brush. If I roll this with my wheel on the mouse, I can make it a larger or a smaller brush. So to adjust your brush size, just roll this in. Let me put it right about, about that big right there to start off with. And I'll just come in here and paint. And that red that you're seeing there, that's the mask down here. That's your mask overlay. You can either work with the mask to easily see where your effect will be applied or just uncheck this and then you just see the effect over there. The mask is very useful if you're working on a more subtle effect. In this case, it's pretty obvious. I'll just go ahead and leave that one off. Okay, so that's the basics on doing the effect. And in this area, simply is masking this and then showing through our adjustments over here on the right hand side. Now, interesting thing about this brush that you're using. If we zoom in, 
take a look at the size of the brush. Let's just compare it down here to the done button. So it's about the same size as that done button right there. So if I go up here and let's just change our zoom size, I'll zoom in a bit here. Come into four to one, it'll really zoomed in. And you can see if I hold the space bar down, you get a hand to kind of move things over. So there's the brush. And notice the brush is the same size. The brush size hasn't gotten larger as we zoom in. So the brush size is independent from your zoom level. And that's very, very useful. Okay, so that's all the basics now about using the tool. Now all you have to do is just come in and do this. Now, because we can't do any real careful selections and so forth like we could do over in a program like Adobe Photoshop, all we can do is come in and brush in to make our selections. It's very much like using the Quick Mask tool over inside of Adobe Photoshop. I'm just gonna scroll out quite a ways or using, the, again, the wheel on my mouse, scroll out as far as possible. Also, notice on this, we have a plus in the middle. That's the middle of your brush size. There is a circle inside and a circle outside. When you're using this brush, you will find that the effect comes into that inner circle, the inner part of that circle. But I'm going to go way out, real small like this, and then simply come in and very carefully paint right along the edge to get the effect that we want. If it's a real small spot like that, just scroll out further, get a smaller brush, and go into that brush. Now the idea here is just to take your time and go around and do the whole figure this way. And I'd start in real tight like this. And once you have taken care of the selection right around the figure, you can then make your brush size larger and take this out further. Once you're even further out, go larger than that and then just fill in the whole back area. Now it takes quite a while to do this. It's not a fast process, unfortunately. It takes a pretty steady hand to do this, but it is easily doable. Now, if you use the wrong size brush on this and you come in too far, you may get something like that, where you're removing color from your foreground subject. That's easy to fix. Just hold the Alt key down. Take a look at the brush. Hold the Alt key down. Notice how that changes from a plus to a minus. With the Alt key down, you can take out that setting. So you can work back and forth to get just the right amount on that edge. Again, it can take you a little while to do this, but you can do a real nice, clean, careful job. That's why I'm also keeping my saturation at, you know, just doing just the one saturation level as I'm doing this particular control. I want to have as much control as possible on this and not be worrying about any additional adjustments. So we'll be doing just this part first. So that's the basic concept in here is just to work around the edge, take your time, and then go in and make your selection in here, make your adjustment. This is basically again making a quick mask. Once you're done around the figure, you'll then back out and just do that right up here on the navigator is easy way to do this. Go here to two to one, back out a bit, and there's our backed out. You can then make the brush larger and do more of the background much more quickly this way once you've taken care of that stuff that's in close to your foreground subject. Okay, now I'm going to pause the video at this point and I'll go ahead and finish this off. It's exactly what I just showed you what I'll be doing. I'm going to zoom in real tight, probably using a four to one like this, bring my brush size way down, and I'll just come in and take my time. I'll do a very careful selection along the edge. If I go over like that, I'll use the Alt key and clean it up. There we go. And then just do a very careful selection along the edge. Once I have my nice edge done, I'll back out a little bit on that, pull that out a bit further, then make the brush larger and continue to clean up the rest of the figure. So I'll pause the video at this point. I'll finish that step, clear around the whole figure. You know, starting the whole figure that way. Once that part is done, I'll then bring the video back up again and we'll talk about the rest of our adjustments over here on the right hand side to finish it off 
with the nicest look possible. All right, I finished painting in that mask. Now you can see how we have that nice black and white background and the full color foreground. Now is a good time to look at this little checkbox down here. Again, the shell selected mask overlay. And you can see the mask that's been applied. And you can now understand how the controls over here are applied to the mask section inside of the project. You'll also see over here, there's that little handle right there, the little pin. Let me just uncheck this. I'm going to grab this pin and pull it down a bit. And you'll see down here how it's actually moved the mask over and the mask is controlling what's in the masked area, not actually what's on the figure itself. So just be aware of that. Once you have that placed, unless you want to move your effect, leave that where it is. Don't try to push that around. Let's just undo that move here. Now we still have all of our controls in here, so if you want to, you can come over and make more adjustments. We also can show or hide that pin. You don't have to see that. I have it set for always down here. Could go for never. And you just don't need to even see that initial pin spot if that's getting in your way. Let's look at this now. Now the background, this often happens when you're converting a blue color into black and white. That's because our eyes are sensitive, more sensitive to yellow than they are to blue. So our eyes don't really realize how light a blue color is value wise. So let's go ahead and fix that. Once we have this in place, this mask in place, we of course can come over here and make all kinds of adjustments. Let's just see if we can bring our highlights down a little bit, see if this does anything for us. I'm not really seeing anything there on the highlights. Let's try bringing our shadows a bit darker. That's looking better. A little more contrast between the foreground and the background now just by darkening in that background a bit. And let's make our blacks a bit more. Notice how the darker colors on the left hand side and the lighter on the right hand side. Probably a bit too far there on the blacks, but we're getting close. So once you have your mask in place with your adjustment brush tool right here, you can come in and go back and rework these all you want. You also can edit this course. We can make a new one once we have finished our editing down here. So that looks pretty good for the background. It's now pushed back about where it felt like it was when we had it as a blue value. So the foreground is very much in the foreground. You can, as I just said, add in additional pins if you want to for additional adjustments. Let's go over here and just click on New. I'm going to just come in here and paint right along the edge of the skirt here. Like that. Let's show our overlay. You can see now we have a new overlay here just on that skirt area. I make my brush size a little bit smaller. Hold the Alt key down and let's clean this up around the outside. So as I said before, you can come in and work back and forth on your controls here, on your mask, to get just the way you want it. I'm doing this one fast because I'll be doing a color change and it's not that critical since there's no color back there. And we'll come back and put a little bit more right down in there. Okay, so let's say I wanted to tone down the blues in that area. I'll put the saturation back up to its zero point. Let's just type that in. There we go. Everything else is at zero point. Now what I want to do is just bring down the blue values a little bit in there. So I'll go up here to temp and I have blues are right here and yellow here. So let's move the temp a little bit over to the right hand side and just tone down the blues a bit right along that edge of that skirt. So as you can see here you're not stuck with just one control. You can do several adjustment brushes with several pins. Now down below here or Again, we can see our pins or not. Let's click on Always, and I have two pins. I did one here, and I did one down here. If I roll over, you can see there's the mask overlay on that pin. So you can see where that one is. And then here's the mask overlay on that. I'm, I'm not pushing anything. I'm just rolling over it at this point. So you can have multiple pins as well for even more control using the adjustment brush. 
So there you go. That's how you can create a black and white with color photo in here using the adjustment brush. Let's set that back to never so we don't see those pins on there. And the final thing you may want to do, of course, is then to export this picture out as a different file format or a different file name. And that's just going up to the File menu and come down to Export and then choosing your export settings. So there it is. That's your adjustment brush right there, black and white with color. And don't forget, if you want to help support this channel and also learn a whole lot more about Adobe Lightroom, take a look at the description just down below there where you'll find a link for my complete training courses. Thank you for watching my video. I hope you found it useful. If you like this video, click on the like button below to let others know. You can click the subscribe button so you don't miss any of my videos in the future. I'm frequently uploading new training videos. Don't forget to check out my website at howtogurus.com.